Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. How do you like this drapery material? Isn't it a cheerful design? Chief. I'm having the whole office done in money green. A very restful color. Chief, get, get a grip on yourself. Something, something terrible has happened. The bank's been robbed. No, it's your wife. My wife's been robbed. No, it's worse than that. The bank and my wife have been robbed. Mr. Drysdale, it does not concern money. Don't scare me like that. Listen to me, please. Your wife has disappeared. Oh, no, she hasn't. She's in the hospital for her nerves. You know, there's nothing wrong with her, really. She just went in to spite me. Said it was in protest against the clappers living next door. She even had a psychiatrist fly out from New York, charge me 200 bucks a day, plus transportation. Mr. Chief, your wife has disappeared from the hospital. Well, she probably went home. In high time, too, that room is costing me 75 bucks a day. Mrs. Drysdale did not go home. No one knows where she is. Are you serious? Absolutely. Your wife is missing. She vanished from her hospital room and her mattress with her. Well, let's get over there. Oh. Ellie Mae, get that critter off of her. Yes, sir, Granny. Is she still sleeping? Sound as alarm. <laughs> Take her up to the bedroom next to mine. We'll have her well in no time. You got a nurse, Miss Drysdale, cause I got medicine to make and doctoring to do. Well, yes, some Granny. Skipper and Cousin Bessie can help me. Skipper, fetch in Cousin Bessie. <laughs> well, they'll be better help than them goomers at the hospital. How's it coming, Doctor? Slow, slow. But then it don't pay to hurry when you're mixing medicine. That's a fact. Well, Jethro has found you a dandy mud dauber's nest. Oh. Yeah, Granny, look at this. It's a 19-holer. A 19-holer? Mm-mm. There's a heap of curing in that rascal. Granny, Miss Drysdale's commencing to wake up. Well, it's about time. She's been sleeping ever since we fetched her home from the hospital. You don't reckon she got the purple drowsies? <laughs> I won't know for sure until I examine her. Uh-oh. I'm pretty near out of my all-purpose throat gargle, mouthwash, and germ killer. Well, I'll get you some more, Granny. Oh, uh, where are you hiding it still now? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's down in the bushes by the cement pond. I'll draw you off about four fingers. Now, let's see. I got everything I need to give Miss Drysdale a complete and thorough scientific medical examination. Buzzard foot, fever finder, dried newt skin, acephidity bag, left hind shoe of a spavin mule. I'm ready. Oh, don't forget your mud dauber's nest. Yeah. I'll put that right next to my powdered bat wings and dried beetles. Gee, Granny, sure do make me want to be a doctor. It could happen, Jethro. But generally speaking, I don't hold to the idea of men being doctors. The Clampin House. Oh, it can't be. I went to the hospital to get away from them. Doctor. Nurse! Please come in, honey. Oh, no. Rest easy, Miss Drysdale. Granny's here to doctor you. What am I doing? 
They throwed you out. What? Right out the window, mattress and all. We found you laying in the bushes, sound asleep. Oh. Uncle Jed and me hefted your mattress onto the truck and brung you home so Granny could take care of you. You didn't even wake up. Speaking of that mattress, Jethro, I reckon we'd ought to take it back to the hospital. Granny's got it sunning in the yard. Yeah, I'll put it on the truck and wait for you out front. Here's your germ killer, Granny. How you feel, Miss Drysdale? I'm so confused. Please call my husband. I've been trying to do that, but he ain't at home and he ain't at the bank, uh, nor Miss Jane neither. Could he be at the hospital? Oh, I hope not. That's a terrible place. <laughs> They's awful unfriendly. Why, we had to climb up the fire escape to come and see you. Right, Jethro and me will have to get that mattress back in your room the same way. Well, take good care of her. We will, Paul. If only I weren't so groggy and sleepy. I bet you them hospital doctors give us something, like they's always doing on television. <laughs> Don't you worry, honey. We ain't gonna let them squirrely TV quacks get you again. A real doctor's gonna be treating you now. <laughs> Take this spavin' mule shoe. That's right. Let me out of this madhouse. Oh, that poor woman thinks she's still back in that hospital. <laughs> hospital, I hold you responsible. Calm down, Mr. Drysdale. I assure you, we will solve the mystery of your wife's disappearance. How can a 132-pound woman suddenly disappear? You need a lost and found apartment. <laughs> now, what do you think you're doing? Making deductions, Chief. I'm uh, somewhat of an amateur detective. Ah, oh, baloney. If you want to do something, get my lawyer over here. Can we discuss this in my office? Now, we're launching a full-scale investigation. And I am launching a full-scale lawsuit. No wonder you doctors wear masks. 75 bucks a day for this room, and my wife isn't even in it. Now, I want my money back. Mr. Drysdale, your wife will be found and returned to you. I didn't ask for that. I asked for my money back. <laughs> Fine hospital you're running. Well, you didn't help matters any when you dismissed your wife's specialist and sent him back to New York. He was charging me 200 bucks a day, and she wasn't even sick. Will you lower your voice? I'll do that when you guys lower your rates. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale was under sedation and therefore could not walk to the window. Supposition. She must have been carried <laughs> on her mattress. Oh, howdy, Miss Jane. Howdy, Miss Jane. We figured the hospital would be looking for Miss Drysdale's mattress. But, but, but how did you get it? Well, we found it down yonder in the bushes and her on it sound asleep. We figured the hospital folks throwed her out the window. So we fetched her home and Granny put her to bed. She's at your house? Safe and sound. And getting treated a heap better than she did here. Yeah, every time we come to visit her here, they had this room dark and gloomy. Yeah, so the first thing we done was to open the window and move the bed up to it so she could see out when she woke up. Yeah, well, come on, boy. Granny needs us. Oh, uh, tell Mr. Drysdale not to worry about his wife. Hey, I never did find out what these here buttons were for. Well, like I said before, boy, leave him alone. Come on. Bye, Miss Jane. the control buttons. Of course, of course. Well, naturally, I'm glad my wife is safe at the Clampets, but I'm not swallowing that cock and bull story about her being launched out the window by Jethro. But, but Chief... I'm suing this hospital for a bundle, and that's that. Help me move the bed to the window, and I'll demonstrate. And I'll demonstrate that you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Miss Hathaway, I've just located the nurse who was on duty at the time of Mrs. Drysdale's disappearance. So it raises the bed. So what? And I'm sure we can... Hey! Press the button to stop this thing! Right right you see that, Jethro? No, what? He just chucked another one out the window. No. Yeah. Boy, these are mean bunch. For a fact, they are. You couldn't get me in that hospital for no amount of money. <laughs> Oh, how 
is he, Doctor? Oh, he's fine. It's just a sprain. But the way he threatens lawsuits, I am not taking any chances. This is ridiculous. You're just trying to get my money. No, I'm just trying to keep you from getting mine. Rest easy, Chief. I'm going up to the Clavitts now with Dr. Sanders to get Mrs. Drysdale. What? I'll see that she gets the room next to this one. Now, wait a minute. What for? She's all right. Well, I have to make sure of that. She, too, fell from this window. Yeah, but she's got more padding. <laughs> Nevertheless, she is still my responsibility. She has never been officially discharged from this hospital. Now, you're just trying to hook me for another 75 a day. I want my lawyer! Better put the truck under cover, Jethro. Sun's commencing to fade to paint. <laughs> yes, sir. You don't want to go back there. They is chucking folks out the window right and left. What's going on? What's she doing out of bed? I want to go back to the hospital. The hospital! I don't think she knows what she's saying, Granny. I reckon that fall out the window shook a few jars off the shelf. I was just on my way up to give her some nerve quietener. Open wide, Miss Drysdale. Ah! <laughs> Fetch the poor thing back, Chad. You better give her a double dose when I do. Her nerves is tighter than a high string on a $2 fiddle. <laughs> Look who's making a beeline for the back door. Put me down, you Neanderthal. Well, I should tote her upstairs and lock her in? No, hold her there. When she gets a spoonful of my nerve tonic, she'll be as quiet as a kitten. I refuse to swallow one drop of your witch's brew. Here, Jim. When she opens her mouth wide, spoon it in. I have no intention of opening my mouth. Ah! There you are. You can put her down now, Jethro. But well, she'll run away. No, she won't, Jethro. Granny's nerve tonic's got a mighty soothing effect. Okay. I'm going home and call the police and have you all put away. See? I told you. Don't worry, she won't run for her. Floating, Granny. Reckon this stuff's a mite strong for city folks? Pure so. I better call her in before she goes over the wall. <laughs> Come on back, Miss Drydale. Come in to Granny. <laughs> I'm Granny. <laughs> I'm Tinkerbell. Doctor, it might be best if I went in alone to get Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, any particular reason? Several, none of which you would understand at this point. <laughs> Sorry, Bessie, but Granny says you can't be Miss Drysdale's nurse no more. You let her get away once. Oh, hi there, Miss Drake. Somebody's with you? Oh, yes, but, uh... I'm afraid this little nurse is one of the things he might not understand. Uh, where's Mrs. Drysdale? Upstairs in the room next to Granny's. Where's Granny? Oh, out back. Want me to go and fetch her? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll talk to her later. <laughs> No, that's what M.D. meant. Mr. Doctor. And them snakes on that there stick. I'm gonna be a brain surgeon. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Where are you studying medicine? Uh, in the kitchen, mostly. In the kitchen? Yeah, that's where Granny makes her medicine. 
She's the one I'm studying doctrine from. Oh, yes. Your, your grandmother is a doctor. Oh, great as she is. You ought to see what she done for Mrs. Drysdale. Well, just what did she do for Mrs. Drysdale? Loosened to her nerves to where they was like a bunch of wet noodles. <laughs> hey, how would you like to meet Granny? I would like that very much. Well, she's out back. I'll go fetch her. Come on now. Hey, that's it. My name is Tinkerbell. I can fly. Whoop. Oh, boy. Hey, where are you taking Miss Drysdale? Uh, Dr. Sanders is taking her back to the hospital. Well, well I best go fetch Granny. Granny! Oh. Granny! Up oh, we go. Get to the door. Miss Hathaway, what is going... Doctor, give me a hand and let's get out of here. But I was about to meet a character named Granny. That's why we have to get out of here. Hey, Granny! Yeah? Granny, come quick! Granny! Granny! Hey, Granny! Granny! I'm getting dizzy. Hey, there's a doctor waiting out front to see you. And Miss Jane says another doctor's taking Miss Drysdale back to the hospital. We're overrun with the lineage. Yeah. Them hospital doctors just got Miss Drysdale again. That ain't all. They got Mrs. Drysdale, too. No! I just heard about it next door. We gotta get down there and save them. Follow me! The truck is up. Well, never mind. Come on, youngins. We'll pick her up on the fly. <laughs> No such thing as being safely in bed in this hospital. And I thought they were going to put her in the next room here. They did? They did not. There's some nut in there who keeps saying she's Tinkerbell. That is your wife. My wife? No wonder she fell out of the window. She's juiced. No, Chief. It's something Granny gives her that seems to induce a state of complete rapture and relaxation. The hospital technicians are trying to determine what it could be. Well, when they find out, get me a double. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, how are you feeling now? Oh, no, oh, no. You're not going to operate on me. Let me out of here. Oh, wait, wait. Relax, relax, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> now, I have just come from observing one of our young residents perform his first appendectomy. Mm -hmm. I don't do surgery anymore. The heck you don't. You've already removed the better part of my wallet. <laughs> now, let me out of here. I've got to get back to the bank and get this guy's ransom money ready. <laughs> I still say it ain't fitting for a doctor of my standing to have to climb through the window like a snake thief. Well, let's face it, Granny. This hospital is a mighty peculiar place. The quicker we get Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale out of it, the better. Well, where do you reckon they are? Well, come on, we'll find them. Bingo! Miss Drysdale's in this one. Well, likely Mr. Drysdale's in the next one. What are you doing here? We come to fetch Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale out of here. Oh, you can't do that. They're under the care of Dr. Sanders. They're under the care of Dr. Granny. <laughs> You'll be in trouble if you're so much as seen on this floor. Miss Hathaway, oh. who are these people? What are they doing here? We use the clampets, ma'am. We come to fetch the... the laundry. Uh, the laundry. Here, I'll, I'll show them where it is. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, nurse. Right inside. There we are. <clears throat> they're, uh, they're, they're charity cases. Dr. Sanders is trying to help them out. All right, all right. Oh, Miss Hathaway, I'm glad you're still here. That boss of yours is too much for me. He's leaving. You're releasing him? Releasing him? I'm throwing him out. I <laughs> doggies, I was afraid of that. Now they fixed to throw poor Mr. Drosdale out. And his wife will be right behind him. We didn't get here a minute too soon. Well, we might trick you getting him down that fire escape. Well, you and Jethro can stand under the window, and Granny and me will drop him to you. No more fire escape for me. I'm going out the front door like a brain surgeon had order. Where'd you get that? There's a whole shelf of them over yonder. Boy, I think you come up with a great idea. Oh, thank you. What is it? Never mind. <laughs> Hathaway, 
Dave, come to the cashier's office with me. I want you to approve every item on that skinflint's bill. Oh, nurse, get that wheelchair ready for Mr. Drysdale. Come along, yes, Miss Atherley. Well, could, couldn't we go later? No, I... please. You know, I'll bet he would go all the way to Africa just to get free treatment from Schweitzer. <laughs> No surgery. He said I could leave. Don't touch me! Quiet down, Mr. Drysdale. Yeah, it's us. We've come to get you out. Oh, you gave me a fright. Uh. Your nerves on edge, isn't it? Uh, I'll say they are. Open wide. <laughs> what was that? Nerve quiet nerve. Now get him in the wheelchair, Jed. Ellie and me will fetch Miss Drysdale. Like as not, she needs a booster by now. <laughs> Concern, Doctor. Two patients have been spirited out of my hospital. I call that cause for concern. But we're not sure the Clampets did it. And besides, you were ready to release Mr. Drysdale. Well, yes, but not into the custody of a witch doctor. <laughs> now, there is some medical hanky panky going on at the Clampets, and I intend to look into it. It's nothing. You'll see. Oh, Brady practices a little mountain medicine, you know, harmless home remedies. Well, if what she gave Mrs. Drysdale was a sample, she can be arrested as a pusher. What? <laughs> Why, that stuff made our tranquilizers look like, uh, like pep pills. Well, I assure you it is all perfectly legal and harmless. And besides, Granny confines her cures to her own family. Oh, she does. Take a look at that. <laughs> I, I, I wonder how that got there. Well, I suggest we drive in and find out. Yes. Yes, Ruth. Let's get these contraptions back to the hospital. Well, won't Granny need them for her hospital? They don't belong to us. Neither does that outfit you're wearing. Well, I like it. Makes me feel like a real doctor. Bring the truck around. We ain't keeping nothing that don't belong to us. <laughs> That sign out front must be a prank. <laughs> You'll see, they're just simple, fun-loving hillbilly folk. <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss Jane. Howdy, Doctor. Well, that simple, fun-loving kid is studying brain surgery in the kitchen. How is I? Oh, this here's Cousin Ellie. And this is Cousin Bessie. She used to be a nurse. A nurse? Oh, no. What ghastly experiments are they conducting in there? Let's get your car out of the way, Miss Jane. The dry jails is loose again. Come on, youngins, inside and help Granny and me catch them. <laughs> no, I just don't believe it. They've gone way beyond my medical knowledge. I just hope the AMA can handle this. Never mind the net, Granny. The dry jazz is floating back. I'm Tinkerbell. And I'm Peter Pan. It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. 
You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.